Well, basically what microgreens are, are you're basically going to be growing vegetables, but you're going to be growing them for a very short period of time. Um, and uh, the nice thing is you can do it inside and in a matter of one to two weeks, you have something that you can eat and put in a salad, snack on, and it's very healthy and nutritious and very easy to digest. So we're going to be showing you about growing sunflower, which is this microgreen here that's just started to germinate. Uh, the first thing we do is we put soil in the container. Um, so where can you guys all hold up your different containers? Hello. We've got Imen holding up. Sometimes, you know, we, we may not have video from everyone. So okay. uh, there we go. Okay. We got some containers there. Okay. We got, all right. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take some of your soil and you're going to put it into the container. So, so here, here, this is a little, this is what we call a plastic clamshell. Um, you find them when you go to the grocery store and maybe buy strawberries or some other pro, um, produce. Um, it has drainage holes on the bottom. So what we do is we place some soil that we have on our desk in the small clamshell. Uh, and you can see this has already been done with these. If you can see these two clamshells, I put the soil at least halfway up the, the rim of the clamshell but you could go all the way to three quarters if you want. What you don't want to do is put soil over the top of the rim because then you won't be able to place your seed on top of the soil. So I'll let you guys go ahead and do that now. And uh, maybe you can give us an indication uh, as to when that's been done. But we're not going to put the seed in yet. We're just going to put the dry soil in. So I've done this with an empty clamshell. Imagine this is my soil here. And you know, maybe I have a newspaper underneath it so I'm not making a mess. Um, if you're at a kitchen table or you don't want to get dirty in your computer, so be very careful. All right. So the next thing you want to do is gently even out the surface. Right now you can see my soil is sort of like at different levels in this pot. So I'm just going to take my fingers and gently top down the soil so that it's even all around. Another way you can do it is if you have an extra clamshell, you can take the clamshell and you can press it very gently on top of the soil and you end up with a fairly uniform surface on top. Maybe I take the stick out and get the edges. And what we're doing is we're creating a nice surface so that the seed can grow uniformly on top of the soil. And let me know if we're ready for the next step, if we've done that. We've got one thumbs up. It looks like we're working a little bit more on getting that soil proper. There's another thumbs up. Let's see. Ready from Imen. Okay, it looks like Tim and Lisa, we are, we are pretty much ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to take now, let's see, I believe we have three different seeds from what I understand. We have one seed that is very, very small. It's called amaranth. Am I correct? Correct. All right. We have another seed that is round and a little bit big. That's a pea shoot seed or a pea plant seed. This is Lisa showing you the pea. It's very hard to pick up the amaranth though. It's so small. And finally, we have a, a sort of a somewhat small, but bigger than the amaranth seed, which is a mixture of, I believe, of kale and broccoli, um, sort of what we call a brassica. 
plant. Brassicas are plants that include kale, broccoli, and mustard. If you've ever had mustard uh, or mustard seed in particular, then you, you've eaten part of a brassica plant. Okay, so Can we put it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose instead of doing all three seeds in the same pot. I believe what we're going to do is we're going to create three pots like this. So if you've done the first one before we do any seeding, it's probably a good idea that we put soil in two other containers, just like you did the first one. So I'm going to get my two other containers ready. So I put three different seeds in three different containers. So I'll let you go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and uh, you're gonna follow the same procedure. Soil goes in another container. This way we'll be ready. And Tim and Lisa, while we're all getting our containers filled with soil, um, would you mind letting us know a little bit about uh the nutrients of uh microgreens in general and what what separates that maybe from other plants so microgreens can have up to 40 times more nutrients than the mature vegetable uh research from john hopkins university showed that the nutrient density of a microgreens was up to 40 times more than the mature vegetable. So pretty much everything that the plant needs to grow is in the seed. Um, and then once it starts to grow, all of those nutrients end up in the stem. So here we have a microgreen growing. And so you can kind of see the seed at the very, very bottom. And all those nutrients are now in the stem and in the leaves. If you wait until the end of the summer, when the plant is mature, on its mature kale or mature broccoli, all those nutrients have gotten diluted throughout the entire plant. And you've got more water, more added nutrients for photosynthesis, but pretty much you have to eat like 50 plants of kale versus the microgreen, which is this tiny little plant. So we can't eat that much kale, mature kale, so we opt for the microgreen to get a lot of nutrients. And microgreens are really popular with people who are trying to build up their immune systems. And so here you can see the radish growing. Okay. Any questions? So what I just did is I just got a paper towel. I don't want to get soil all over my computer. I know many of you are working near a computer, so, so you don't upset your parents. Maybe just sort of brush your soil into a pile that's not near your computer so we don't have issues. But yet, make it a little clean. So I have one container of soil. I have two containers of soil, and I just swept a little bit. And now I'm gonna just finish my last container of soil and make it somewhat neat. All right. Excellent, Tim. Just, um, I know Odessa joined us. Hi, Odessa, awesome to see you. Um, so we're just filling right now, filling our three containers with the soil. Um, and just make sure you don't fill them to the top. You wanna to make sure that there's some room there in the top. One and half to one th to two thirds. And again, to make it uniform, I take one of my containers and I can give it just a slight press. And that way I've done, I can do, keep doing that. And now I have three containers of soil that has an even surface so that we can accept the seed. Now, one thing you don't want to do is press too hard. If you press too hard, then you will actually take the air out of the soil. Believe it or not, it's very important to have air in the soil so that the seed can breathe and the root can actually um, be sent down in, into the soil. So don't press too hard, but just enough to create a nice even surface. Excellent, I think we're And then if you're done with that, just take a moment 
to sort of clean up your area because what you're going to be doing is actually adding water to the container. Um, it might help if, uh, if you have something available like a tray or a plate, you could always put it on a small plate because so that way the water won't drip onto your computer. So maybe I'll give you a, a minute if you're in a position to get, um, um, in fact, I think, did we give you bottom, uh, tops and bottoms? Yes. We, yes. Right. Bottom, so, bottom. You, so what you can do is you can get a top to this clamshell and you can actually sit it. Can you go get the top, Lisa? And you, here we go. So you can get a top, this is the top, and you can actually put your container, hopefully you didn't water it yet, inside the top, the top becomes a bottom. And that way, when we water, we won't end up getting water all over our table and upsetting our parents. And I'm gonna clean this soil on my table because I made a mess, but that's okay. Gardening is sometimes messy. And real quick before we make the next step, hi there, Belter, Belter's iPhone. I don't know who, who that is, but welcome. Um, we are just, we just finished putting our soil into our three containers. We want either halfway or three quarters filled with soil. And then uh, we're gonna listen to Tim and Lisa for our next step. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take some water. So I'm just gonna use a water bottle um, and I'm gonna pour a little bit of water, not a lot, on top of ooh, the soil so that it's nice and wet. And you might see it dripping out from the bottom. So you can just check, um, but you wanna moisten it down. Um, so, you start to see up oh, there we go so now that means it's pretty moist so you're going to do that for this one too you're going to put it in here and you're going to do the same with this one now what we want to do is make sure that the water is evenly distributed in the soil if you're using a jug of water like this the, um i like to put my thumb or my finger over it and pour slowly as opposed to pouring too quickly. That way I don't make divots in the soil. So I just pour a little bit like that. Sometimes you have a watering can with a shower head. That's another good way of pouring water in. Now, what you don't wanna do is flood it. How do you know if you flooded the soil? If you've poured so much water in that water is pooling on the bottom plate, then you wanna take that water and um, dispose of it somewhere else, like a sink. Like take that excess water and throw it out. You don't want it sitting in water. What will happen is whenever seed um, sits in too much water, then the seed becomes anaerobic, okay? And we think of aerobics as working out and getting in shape and moving your uh, muscles around and jumping jacks. Well, anaerobic basically means there's no oxygen. And when something is anaerobic, it can't breathe. And when you create soil that can't breathe, guess what? That seed can't grow. So um, what we've done is we've wet our soil, or, um, but not made it anaerobic, not saturated it to the point where uh, the seed can't breathe. I'll let you take a minute and let me know when everybody has their three containers ready and then we'll go on and start seeding the seeds. Great. So if, if anybody wants to give me or give us a thumbs up, I see one thumb up over there from the Harringtons, I think. Another thumb up from Odessa. Another thumb up from Amaya. I meant, how you doing? You got a thumb up? Thumbs up. Let's see. See, oh, cool! Look at uh, Belter's got. Can you um, who is the uh, look at this garden here? 
Um, my name's not Walter. That's my dad. But um, we planted these uh, kind of yes, yes, well, on Tuesday yesterday, and we we bought some and also some seeds. Oh, so good. and. We kind of put seeds here already, so that's why it, it just shows dirt. So we put broccoli, pepper, and cucumber. And cucumber. Cool. And Are also you? we have uh, tomato plants and then onions. Can you shoot that one? Well yeah. done. Amazing. And we also have mint. So cool. Ooh. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your amazing garden. Um, it looks like Tim and Lisa, we are ready to move on to our next step. Okay, so now we're gonna seed. Um, what I like to do is, you know, you work with water. You just work with water, like pouring water into the soil. So what, so what I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do, do is, I'm gonna, gonna dry, dry my hands off. I have my, my, my tissue. tissue. One sec there, Tim and Lisa, just turn off one of your audios because you're echoing. Is that better? Much better. Uh, wait, wait, nope, still got the echo, I think. Do we have uh, just one audio on before or? Yeah, there's, there's a little bubble appeared and said the, the host wants to allow you to speak. So I um here i can do this let me see uh, I, can, I can take it off on my phone that might do it yep hey is that better that is better terrific okay. all okay. right so my hands are dry and the reason i want my hands dry now is i'm going to start working with seed and the first seed I want to work with requires our hands to be dry. That's going to be the amaranth. So find the tiniest seed that you have, and I bet you it's the amaranth. It's smaller than the round um, kale and broccoli. Um, and it looked like, uh, more like, oh, you have, is your amaranth seed white, just to be clear? It is black. Black, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's different types of amaranth, but it's a super small seed. Now, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take a little bit of seed. Do you have seed in a bag or is it in a container? It is, uh, those that have it are in a plastic bag. Okay, so take your dry hand and mine is in a container. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of seed and very carefully distribute it over my container. Um, and I want it to be fairly even, but not in clumps, not in clumps. So what I like to do is just sort of gently move in a uniform direction until the seed is out of my two fingers. Then I get, excuse me, the, Sorry. So I get, then I get some more seed in my fingers and then I go over an area that doesn't have seed. Now you it's very small seed. So you're just going to have to make sure you don't spread too much seed in clumps. So do that until you find that you have evenly distributed seed in the container. Um, it's an experiment because you might find that you only have, um, uh, a few seeds that germinate, or you might find you have hundreds of seeds that germinate. So you're gonna experiment the first time you do this with the level of seed that, um, that the soil allows, but you don't wanna put like a pound of seed in a small container like this. So uh, how much with the amaranth? Maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, uh, but it's hard to say because it's such a small seed. So. Now I've evenly distributed the seed and I can stop. I've done the amaranth. Okay, and you can barely see it because um, the seed's the same color, but it, it is on there. Now, very important for the amaranth 
is that it's a good idea to have a, a spray bottle um, and you may not have it. Um, and if you don't, I'll show you how to do it without a spray bottle. But amaranth seed requires a little moisture before it decides to grow or germinate. Um, it's what we call a mucilaginous seed. Uh, think of it like, it's kind of a disgusting term, like mucus, but mucus is wet, right? And it sort of means that like that seed is not gonna start growing until it gets wet. Um, and not every seed is like that, but there are certain seeds like basil and mustards and amaranth that need moisture before they start to grow. So I'm gonna gently spray my seed into the soil and then I have activated the seed, okay? If you don't have a spray bottle, you can certainly take a little water just don't do a heavy pour. Remember how I said I take a finger and I put it over part of the nozzle? And then I just do a gentle pour over the soil. How do I know I've only done a gentle sore, uh, pour? Because there's not too much water in my container. I haven't caused anaerobic conditions, okay? So let me know when you've done the amaranth and we'll move on. All right, everyone. Yeah, just to summarize what Tim said, right, is um, we want to make sure that we're not clumping up our amaranth. It's super small, right? So it's it, it's t you want to make sure your hands are dry and just sort of uh, sprinkling it into your container there. So when everybody feels they've done that, feel free to give me a thumbs up. I got a big thumbs up there. Awesome. I got a Good thumbs up. I got another couple good thumbs up. Thank you, everyone. Now, it's also a good idea to close that seed packet if you can. You want to sort of put it aside now that you're done with the amaranth. Now, if you you can grow amaranth in an outside garden, it's a very interesting plant. Um, it usually ends up being a red leaf. It's edible as a mature leaf. Um, in some parts of the Caribbean, they call it Kalaloo. Kalaloo. Um, and in the fall, it has this wonderful spiky flower. Uh, it's a huge spike that's full of amaranth seeds. Um, amaranth is actually a grain, believe it or not, a grain. You know, when you, when you get cereal in the morning, sometimes cereals like oats or grains. Well, amaranth is a type of grain. And if you do the history and look into the history of amaranth, it's quite amazing. Uh, I'll give you a little history lesson as you're sort of doing this. Um, amaranth was grown by many indigenous people in South America or what we call South America. Think of the Mayas, the Aztecs and the Incas. Well, at one point in history, the Spanish discovered uh, this area and decided to, in some ways, conquer or tame or uh, uh, civilize some of these uh, civilizations that they felt were not Christian and uncivilized. Well, so these cultures often used amaranth uh, to eat and in their religious practices. When the Spanish found out they almost eradicated or banned or got rid of all the amaranth in the world. But somehow amaranth miraculously survived. So that's a little story on amaranth, but ask your history teacher more. Very interesting history about amaranth. If you look at your seed, you might notice that it's turned a color, maybe a little bit light purple. And that's because the seed is starting to absorb the water. Okay, all right, let's move on to our next seed. Um, so we've done the amaranth. Um, do, do they have labels? Yes, no, right. yeah, they have sticks. Okay, before we move on, um, so, we don't, so we know what we've done. Um, if you want, you, you can write the word amaranth. You wanna do it, Lisa? You can write the word amaranth okay. so on your stick, if you have a stick. I also like to write the date because it's sometimes easy to forget like what you've done and when you did it. 
So I like to write the date on my stick, the date I germinated these seeds. So we have the word amaranth and the date, which is May, uh, April 28th. That's the date you started the seed. Now, this is important for two reasons. A, you don't forget, oh yeah, I did amaranth on that day, but also it helps you check when you think the seed should start to grow. Amaranth takes about three to four days under ideal conditions, but it shouldn't take two weeks. So if you come back in two weeks, say, oh, I forgot to check, and you check your seed and you don't see anything, then it didn't germinate. And there are a number of reasons why seeds don't germinate. Maybe you took the container and you put it outside in wintertime and it got so cold that the seed died. Or maybe you put it on top of a radiator that got so hot that the seed didn't germinate. So you sometimes have to find, just like we like, a, like an ideal environment, you have to find the ideal environment for seeds. And typically we think of anywhere between 60 degrees and maybe 80 degrees. The same temperature that we kind of like, that's what seeds like to germinate. So try to find an environment where uh, once, you, once you're ready, there's a consistent 60 to 80 degrees in temperature and that will help the seed grow. All right, so we're, we're moving on to our second seed. I have my second container. And why don't we step up to the next size seed, which is the kale micro mix, the kale and broccoli, I believe it's a brassica micro mix. And that will be labeled everyone who has um, their materials, it will be labeled as micro on your bag. So again, it's going to be the same process, but this time it's a little nicer. You don't have to worry about the seed being dry as you're putting your hand in there into the bag. So grab a clump of seed and I've done it in this container for you. And again, you get to distribute the seed over the soil, avoiding clumps. So if you get a clump, just take your finger and sort of gently spread the seed around so that it's evenly distributed. And this is what I did only distributed the seed. Um, my seed is a different color than yours, but I'll show you how we do it because it's about the same size. So I take my container and I'm spreading seed on the surface. Now, the interesting thing about microgreens is you don't have to bury the seed most of the time. You let the seed stay on top of the soil. It's kind of cool. So when Tim means bury, so here's the soil. Oftentimes when you're planting, you put your finger in and you make a hole and then you put the seed in and then you bury it. That's what he means by burying. But with microgreens, you just put them on top. You don't have to bury them, depending on the variety. Okay. Everyone is a little different, but the brassica mix and the mustard, which is what we have here, you don't have to cover them or bury them. Okay, as you're, you know, people are working at different paces, you are certainly welcome to make your stick, your micro mix stick with, excuse me, with the date that you started the seed, which is the same date as the amaranth, 428. So micro mix 428 and we'll identify this seed. And Tim, what um, for micro mix or for, for you know, the brassicas, what is the general uh, time frame for them? So in an ideal condition, we're gonna look at anywhere between four and five days before the seed starts to grow, four and five days. Again, ideal conditions mean anywhere between 60 and 80 degrees, and that should not be that hard for people to find these days. Um, you don't need to put it in a sunny window 
to start. So the, there was one question that came up in the chat, which was, do you need to put the water on the micromix? So Tim's going to show you again how to put the water on yeah. the micromix. All right. So now you have your micromix seed in your container. And if you have a spray bottle, you could. And don't, don't spray your computer. Yeah. You could sort of um, spray it gently, gently, or if you just have a water jug, um, you can just take the water and gently, remember I put my finger over the top, just gently pour some water over the seed to wet it. Now what's gonna really make these seeds grow um, is creating an ideal humid environment. So yeah, we need 60 to 80 degrees, but we're also going to take the top. Where's the top? Oh, sorry, we gave, we don't have a top, so I'm going to mimic this. Right. So you're going to take your top, and you can do this for the amaranth and the brassica at this point. So you have a bottom, right? And you create humidity by placing a top in the container. So you're going to want to have a container underneath this because you see how this is starting to drift everywhere and make a mess. Yeah, have, make sure you get a paper towel or something to wipe the table. Um, um, you're going to put it underneath like this. And this can be any plastic container. It could be a plate. Um, it could be a bowl. But I'm just, I have this under there so that all that mess there doesn't end up on the table. Or on your computer. Okay, uh, uh, let me know when we're ready and we'll move on to the piece. See some thumbs up. I see one. We're ready. All right, okay, so. Now we're gonna move on to the largest plant. And I bet you you've had, everybody's gotta have had peas at some point in their life. You, sometimes you get peas in a can and it's like, ah, oh, that thing that's on the plate that your mother or father makes you eat. Um, but sometimes you go to a garden, uh, someone's garden, a grandma's garden, for example, and you pick peas right off of a pea shoot vine and it's wonderful. Um, sometimes you can eat the pea with the shell on and other times you actually peel the shell off and eat the actual um, uh, tender, uh, round pea that looks like this. And you have them in your container, okay? Yours might be a little bit more green. Okay, so it's gonna be the same principle. We have our soil in our container. We've wet the soil. Okay, we've wet our soil and now we've distributed the peas over the top of the soil. Okay, so I've already done this um, in my container, but you can do it in your container and I believe your peas are gonna be more green than brown. These just happen to be brown. Um, one of the things that you can also do with peas, which is very interesting, is make pea sprouts. Here's an example of a pea sprout. You can see the pea with the stem and the root, really more of the root, and there's no leaf yet. So that's a pea sprout. And you can do that by just taking a few of your peas if you want to experiment and putting them in a cup of water and letting them germinate, maybe changing the water every day and you might get pea sprouts that look just like this. All right, so you have your peas in your container. Now, peas are tricky, and here's why. If you don't cover them, they sometimes get a little yucky. So I like to take a little extra soil after I've put the seeds on the soil surface, and I like to cover the peas. They tend to grow a little bit better that way and they don't get 
um, mildewy or moldy or yucky. And why do they get yucky? It's just that they're getting uh, exposed to the air and sometimes the air has stuff in it. Molds, mildews, dust. So what I'm gonna do is do just a very light layer of soil to cover the pea shoots. Now you can't see the peas. They're all hidden away under the soil. Okay. And I press it down very gently. Or you can use another container if you want, just to press gently. And voila, we have our peas planted in our container with a, just a little bit of soil over the top to help them germinate better. Do you want to water again? And then you can just put a little water on top like the other two containers. And when you're ready, you can mark your stick, label it P, and label the date that you germinated the plant, which is 428. All right. You are all now young microgreen growers. So I have a question for you guys. We planted amaranth, micromix, and peas. Which one do you think will grow first? What's your prediction? You can put your answer in the chat. So it's either amaranth, micromix, or pea. Which one do you think will grow first? All right. Or you can raise your hand. Okay, we got some different options here. All right, good, good, good guesses. Peas. All right. Okay. All right, Amaranth. Right. Okay. All right. And um, Tim, which one, which one will grow first? Um. Probably the amaranth might start to show um, growth first, but remember the amaranth seed is going to be very small, so it might germinate first. And when we talk about germination, you're going to start to see bits of growth. Here's an example of uh, a brassica that's germinated a little bit, but if you look carefully, you see a little bit of green, but there's a lot of seed that hasn't germinated, right? So that, but you see, that's the start of germination. Why isn't it more uniform? I think I took the top off too early on this tray. If I had left the top on longer, maybe more of the seed would have germinated. Nevertheless, I'm still gonna get a micro mix or a brassica seed to grow. So it's really an experiment, um, but yes, amaranth should germinate first, most likely, if you give it the right conditions. Brassica might be a close second, maybe amaranth's two to three days, maybe four days. Brassicas, um, which are, is the micromix, might be four days to five days. And finally, the pea shoots might take up to a week to pop through the soil. Now, here's a couple of things you can do. Like everybody has a different environment in which they grow. Some people have heat pads, like, you know, during Thanksgiving, you're heating up your, your, um, your muffins on little heat pads. Sometimes putting a heat pad underneath your container causes it to germinate quicker. Right. Um, if you have it in a cooler environment towards 60 degrees, the amount of time it takes to germinate is going to increase. It could be 10 days. Right. So finding that ideal is somewhat important if you want quick growth. But if you don't really care about growth being quick, you can wait it out and it should still germinate. Now, who can guess which microgreen this one is? So this is after it, one of the microgreens that you just seeded has grown. Which it's, one do you think that is? It's a very small microgreen. No, let them guess. Which one is this? Who knows? You can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand.
Any guesses? Which one is this? Is this P, Micromix, or Amaranth? Hey, good guess. All right, any other any other guesses? Okay, all right. So we have some people that said maybe peas, some people said maybe micromix, and some people said maybe amaranth. Now, here, I'll give you a clue. So the Spanish in the 1400s went to the uh, what we call the New World, South America, Central America. They saw this plant and they said, we don't like the color of that plant. And we don't like that it's being used in a ritual way. We're going to ban it. We're going to eliminate it. Can anybody remember which plant it might be now? Amaranth, you got it. That's your amaranth. That's the plant that was all, uh, almost banned because it resembled blood in some sense because it was red. All right, so the next plant that we grow. What we're showing you are some of the plants that we grow here. So these containers are much bigger, but this, the same principles apply. So this is, hey, don't tell them. what plant do you think Which this is? is? This one? They might not be able to see the. There it is. All right, so put it in the chat. What do you think this is? Okay. What do we have? So we got a we got a guess of micro mix, and then we have a guess of P. Okay. Um, so. These are actually the pea shoots. And these pea shoots are about eight to nine days old. And you can start to see they have little tendrils on them. Tendrils are what allows a pea to cling to something. So when a pea grows outside in a garden, it actually tries to grab something and it helps it climb. We call them tendrils. So these are pea shoots. If you planted them in your garden, you could actually have a fairly large pea plant and, and uh, ultimately pick pea pods or, or open the pods and actually eat peas. So you can guess what this microgreen is. It's not one of your seeds. It's very similar though. Who can guess what this is? Any Kevin, vegetable. Kevin it's a beta. Beta. but it's, a uh, it's in the brassica family, which means it's a leafy green. So it could be lettuce, it could be cabbage, it could be kale, it could be cauliflower. Kale, you got it. Good guess. I like that guess. Yeah, so, that's the kale, and that's very similar to what you're growing in your micro mix. Mature kale looks like, and this is micro kale. So basically, one of these tiny little plants here, okay, is the equivalent to a whole head of kale. And this is just one leaf from the head of kale. This little tiny plant would grow into a big plant, all right, that had many, many leaves like this. Okay, so this is um. This is why we eat the microgreens, because you get a lot of nutrients from eating these tiny little plants. The nutrients are very, very densely packed. If you wait till the end of the summer, you're getting a lot of fiber and water, but you're not necessarily getting as many nutrients because it's been a, basically a watered down version of the plant. All right, so what you want to do now um, is Perhaps, I mean, I don't know if you want to get up and move, but it's, it's important to th at least think about where you're going to move your plants when we're done. Try to find an, um, a place that stays between 60 and 80 degrees, but maybe a place where the sun isn't baking like for a few hours because that could hurt the seed. And make um, sure you put the top on yours. Yep, make sure the tops are on all your seeds. Hopefully and make sure you have a bottom so that the water 
<laughs> and your, your stick, you're just going to have to put in the container until three days from now when it starts to germinate. When it germinates. You're going to take the top off and you just either you can put it underneath or you can just put it to the side. And that's when you can stick the stick back in. Great. Okay, but for now, we, there, we want to have this top on the container so that the humidity stays in. So I'll show you an example of another microgreen that's actually grown. So this, you're not growing this. This is a radish microgreen, but it's the same process. You can see that the seed has grown um, above the top of the container. The leaf has started to emerge and I could let it grow out for another day or so. And then what I can do is gently take some scissors. It's best to work with scissors and I can cut the leaves and taste them, right? If you pull a leaf out, what you end up doing is pulling soil out and you don't want to eat the soil. Um, you could pull it out and then take the soil off, but that's why I really recommend using scissors to cut when you're ready to cut the microgreens. Awesome. Well, we have five minutes left. Um, what I'd love to do, if anybody has any questions, um, before we give a huge round of applause to Tim and Lisa, um, any questions on any of the specifics that we went over as far as growing and different types of uh, tactics that we're doing? And you know what I love that Tim and Lisa said? It's all an experiment, right? I think that is the most fun part about this is maybe it'll grow, maybe it'll grow nice and perfect, maybe it won't, right? But you can always experiment and try and try again. So any questions right now, feel free to raise your hand and put it in the chat if you'd like. And as we're waiting for questions, let me just, um, I just want to let you know, you do not need to fertilize your plant. So all the nutrients that are needed are already in the soil and seed. So there's no fertilizing. It's not going to grow for five, uh, you know, five months. It's only going to grow for two weeks. Questions? Do you so do you have to keep watering? The question is, do you have to keep watering? Um, so now what the, the first step you've done, you've put the seed on the soil. The next step is waiting. You're waiting to see growth. Um, you want more than just like the start of growth. You want to see, you know, a little bit of growth. But once you see a little bit of either red, red for the amaranth or a little bit of green, um, for the peas or the brassicas, you take the top off. At that point, the level of humidity in your room is gonna determine how much you have to water. For example, if I took this container and put it outside on a very sunny day, it would dry out very quickly because there's no humidity. But if I took it outside and put it in the rain, then I wouldn't have to water it. So well, if you, if you keep it inside, if you keep it inside, just take a look at whether or not the soil is getting too dry. Um, I like to do a sort of a, a, a weight, kind of like a weight test. Like as I pick it up now, I get a feel for what the container feels like. But if I pick it up and it feels much lighter than this, then I probably need to water. But only, 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 after it started to germinate. Any other questions? Yay. Now, after you get to this stage, right, like where it's really like this, um, there's a couple of ways to water it. The easiest way to water it, this is the easiest thing you have to do. You don't have to actually pour water over the top. Instead, you can add water to your bottom, right? So you have the bottom part here and you can just take the container up if you need to. You can pour a little water into the bottom 
and you can let the roots absorb the water. That way you keep the top part kind of dry and you prevent some issues that some people have with molds and yuckiness and dampness on the leaves. The leaves stay fresher. Can you want to show kind of um, you can. We are just about out of time here. All right. I just want to quickly just show you. So once it gets to be a little bit bigger than this, you're going to take a pair of scissors like that and you're going to cut it. Gently, gently, very carefully. Watch like your fingers. This. And then you're going to put it in a bowl like this. And you have to be really careful because in this instance, I got some soil in there. So I don't want to eat that section because I don't want soil. This isn't quite ready for harvest, but I'm cutting it early just to show you. But this is it here. And then the idea is that now I have a little salad and I can eat this. Mm. Right. Yum, yum, full of vitamin A and vitamin C. Mm. Okay. Excellent. I am super impressed by everybody's uh, participation today. I want to give, can everybody give a big round of applause to Tim and Lisa, please? Woo! Woo! Thank you, guys. Thanks, you guys. And Elevate Youthers, feel free to send us any pictures, or if you have more questions in your growing process, let us know, and we can try to help you. But big thank you to Tim and Lisa, and uh, good luck with, with your growing. Bye, everyone.